Hello, this is Martin Espinoza. I'm at the uh, Roseland Camp um, here behind the Dollar Tree on Sebastopol Road. And today is the day of eviction, uh, scheduled eviction of this camp. There are about 70 campers still here. Uh, last night there were about 85 to 90, and I'm told that overnight some did leave. I'm going to try to get Paul Lowe involved. Uh, He's uh, in Santa Rosa Fire Department to talk about uh, what the what the process is going to be here today. There is a press conference that's going to take place behind me, uh, organized by Homeless Action. I don't know if you can see that here with the sun. But we have a police department here, fire department and uh, the uh, so the we're CBC, about the Community the Development Commission representatives and Catholic Charity representatives are here as well. So I apologize for the delay, everybody. If you could all come a little bit closer because we have a kind of uh, very big sound system here. We're going to start in about three minutes. Let's see if we can get Paul Lowenthal to tell us what's going on. So, Paul, I am I'm live now. You, you want to just... Uh, Tell us a little bit about, about what the process is going to be like here. Yeah, just from the fire department's uh, standpoint, safety is one of our uh, most concerns. Uh -huh. um, obviously, this isn't the, the first large encampment we've seen. Um, with encampments of this size, uh, one of the concerns that we do have is the amount of potential hazardous materials or hazardous waste that's in here. So one of the steps that the fire department will be taking is doing an initial assessment and walking around looking for whether it's propane, butane, gas, diesel, just things that we want to be aware of before uh, any efforts take place within here today. Okay, so and do we have any idea of how long that's going to take or when the actual eviction will start? Uh, from the fire department's perspective, uh, we're here just like I said to help with that initial safety assessment. Got it. Uh, so we'll be walking around taking a look at that uh, within the next few minutes um, before any operations or any sort of uh, outreach uh, takes place in here today. Can you identify yourself please? Uh, Paul Lowenthal, Assistant Fire Marshal with the Santa Rosa Fire Department. Thanks a lot, Paul. You bet remembrance of what's happening here and we'd like to invite you over i believe the police will understand a slight delay while these things are explained and delineated carefully for everyone please join us if you have the time if you don't come and let us know and we'll try to help you out thank you hello folks my name is scott wagner i'm a volunteer with homeless action We are plaintiffs in a lawsuit against this county and also against the city as a result of violations of constitutional rights. And we are witnessing that today here. And hopefully we are some of the final witnesses of this sort of silliness, the antics that occur as a result of ignoring the basic human rights of individuals who have the right to sleep legally somewhere. Amen. Yeah. Make sleep legal. Make sleep legal. They have the right to walk and be free somewhere. They have the right to leave here and find a place. Not to be ran away and brought to here. Now we have spoken with the police and we're hoping that this will be a rational and, and respectful and even kind movement of people off this property but they are being moved now. Our lawyers were ultimately successful in convincing the judge that we had a strong enough case to step in at the last moment and avert this tragedy. And we have homeless action, one of the plaintiffs of that suit, are grieved over that. And we believe that in the end, that suit will prove that we are right that these people get to lay their heads somewhere tonight legally and safely. We're blessed today with uh, a number of people who will speak. Uh, some of our residents will speak. 
And then uh, we will also have uh, a member of the clergy speak tonight, today. Um, I just want to mention, I want to thank all the many people that have tried to support this effort. The many people who have tried to support this effort here. But I ask you, I ask you all to look in your hearts right now and to think about the fact that we have less people here that are mourning this event than are actually suffering behind us. Think about that. Now that includes the police, it includes everyone that's here. We have let these people down. Sonoma County has let these people down. And we must do much, much better at getting our families and our friends and those that we love and care about to be clear about the injustices that are occurring here today and that occur over and over again in a kind of cat and mouse game that we all acknowledge and we all continue for various political reasons. Reverend Bell, could you come up, please? Thank you. Reverend Bell is the head minister of the Santa Rosa Unitarian Universalist Church. He's Harvard educated, an egg-headed brainiac, and good-hearted badass <laughs> with a huge kinship with poor and struggling people. I am not an egghead. <laughs> you can't hide. And I have to say, even though I for a living professionally, I am nearly speechless today. I actually don't find words in me. I just find heartbreak in me. I am grateful that we are here to witness this horror and this evidence that we are not living up to our obligations as human beings and children of God. I think about my Bible and how it says again and again throughout it that basically God is on the side of the poor. God is on the side of the homeless. God is on the side of the disenfranchised and those at the bottom of society. But I'm not feeling that today. I don't know what that means today. When folks are going to leave and not even know where they're going to spend the night tonight. So my prayer is somehow for these folks courage and strength and for all of us as a society the will to create a world where everybody has a roof over their head and i know today we will not see that by the end of this day so i'm just praying for peace and safety and courage for all y'all and that's all i have to say Steve Singleton has been a manager and leader here at the camp for four months. This is Steve Singleton. And done magnificently he left many, three many weeks roles. ago. I'm personally grateful for him. He's, uh, he's actually living at the Palms Inn now. Folks. So, in the last five minutes I heard about being homeless and being poor and all this crap. Hey, about that, we're people, we're people too. Just like you people who live in houses, we're the same as you and everybody else. We may not be as rich as some, but we're still people. That's my biggest complaint. Um, I've been out on these streets for almost 20 years off and on. First, I want to thank the people that got my wife and I some housing. We want people who were exposed to housing. Can't hear you. I want to thank the people that helped my wife and I get into housing. We're one of the people that were into housing. That way we can get some health issues done. But these people here behind me are my brothers and sisters. And uh, <laughs> they don't know what to do. They're scared. There's people that are disabled. Um, there's a multiple of people in here of an array of 120 plus. Um, the officers are doing their job. It's been put down from their, their bosses. So let's, let's get this straight. They, they're just doing their job. If their boss is above their bosses, they're telling these people to move out and know where to go when they promised them. You know, it, it, it's amazing that 
We're one of the richest counties in the state, and this is what we're doing to our people. And my wife and I, about two years ago, we were, we're from downtown, the underpass. That's where we were. They pushed out Homeless Hill, which I know has been there for 20-something years. They came down to the underpasses, which doubled us up. A beautiful lady brought me here in November, and that's how I brought all these people here. Now I got nowhere to go again. So I understand some of the things, but some things I don't. And the one thing I don't is watching these people get scattered again and scared and health. And, you know, we just got a bunch of them healthy from the doctors the last six months. We've done a lot of stuff with these people in here, and now we're turning around doing the opposite again to them. I just don't understand that. My wife and I, we care a lot about the people in here. But I'm scared for them right now because I'm not sure what they're going to do or what's going to happen. I know over the years that they're not nice to us. That they think their tractor's being unloaded, so and the dumpsters are here. We know what that means, anybody that's been around for a while. What I can't understand is they can't find a place to put these people in a structured encampment. It's ran by, you know, a structure. It will work. My wife and I have traveled for four years up and down the coast. We've seen them work. They do work, as long as they're structured. What's, what's the problem? It's, you know, they want to be like every other West Coast city. They all have them, why can't we? I know that it's uh, created a lot of easement out of downtown from us being under the underpasses. I know a lot of things have gone better, but it's gonna all go bad again six months later. So where's, where's, the, where's the give and take? It seems like it's all take and no give. So I don't know what we're gonna do with these people and we gotta get them out of here. Uh, and there's a lot of, lot of people that have been here, wonderful people to help us. I want to thank every one of them over the years from the underpasses to everything. You know, here's a good example. Last night I was left here late. I was going home. The guy's going down the avenue, about 70 miles an hour, blasts into a car. He comes out of his mouth and he tells me, be quiet, homeless man. I said, please say that again so I'm teacher. Right here. The officer said, I'll let him do it too, because I know him, he will. And that's who I am. But I want him to say it again just so I can knock him out. Because we're no different than anybody else. We're all people. Exactly. Exactly. All people. We're all people. Like people. people. We're all 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 people. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. So, I got to get my brothers and sisters out of here now. I'm going to take a walk. Uh, I'm going to try to find a uh, photographer. That's Sean. So this is the camp, and uh, I'm told there's still around 70, 70 people here. There used to be a partition here that separated the two camps. There's a lot to break down. Yesterday I was speaking to uh, somebody from the Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa Police Department and they were saying that they just expect the eviction to begin as early as today. So, I really don't think they're going to get everybody out of here in one day. How you doing?
like there's tents being set up back here out beyond the uh, county property. Oh, there's Beth. Hi. I'm with the Press Democrat. Yeah? Yeah, the police patrol car over here. And I appreciate, really appreciate being laughed at while I'm in this situation. I, I'm like, not it's laughing. Really I'm not this laughing whole situation is emotionally traumatic. Mm -hmm. And I would really appreciate it if you would stop the dialogue. Good morning. Good morning. Well, are they are they setting up back there? They're not migrating over to the other side of this, are they? Don't know. So before, when this encampment first started, this is this was the uh, the initial camp. There was a, it ran a diagonal line from the end of that building all the way over here to this end, and that that uh, that layout or that floor plan, if you will, was a request made by uh, a. a the county, county officials, um, with the uh, community development, um, the CDC, and the point of this diagonal line here was so that it could not be seen from the street. So that was a, that was a county request. This was not a sanctioned. This was not a sanctioned camp, but the county county officials so that the, the so that the camp would not be seen from Sebastopol Road asked that it be that that it be set up that way I'm live There's a woman there. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put the camera on it, but she's. Uh, is that Acadia. Acadia. She's uh, saying they've got nowhere to go. No, there was not. No, there was not. 
You may say that because they bought the fucking money. Hold on. I was out in the navigation center and I've been out here with them. I know, even you're over there, it's way different when, you, when they come here. They're not interested in us. They're just like trying to fucking, they're not helping us. You've been out for 30 days, but they're not helping us. Really, though, we're hurt, we're upset. Like, fucking look at Yeah, you sound angry, I hear that. Well, look what the fuck we're doing. Look what we're doing, we're doing nothing. They're giving, they're kicking us out, but nobody came here for the last 30 days, nobody. Not all of them. Okay, like, so, I have no, so two things, two things, if I can just take a turn. One, host is coming here out as soon as they're done engaging over there, right? We already talked about it. They're on their way over. Two, I was out to the navigation center that was open, and they were there for those 30 days. And three, I was here yesterday walking through with hosts while they were shouting out, if anybody wants to do this, you got Nope, nope, nope. They never done a damn thing. Were you assessed by them? I was with her when this happened. I was the first person that signed up with And I was the second. I was the first person. It's wrong, really. Well, how about this? In a couple minutes, they'll be over here. It sounds like this there's some issue between you guys. No, fuck no, they ain't. They ain't no issue. Fucking reality check. Right here. We have nowhere to go. No, we have nothing. We don't. We don't have nothing. Happy. And you guys want to sit there and fucking like, try to help us? There's nobody helping us. Look where we at right now. We're stressing. We're I'm upset. Get, we're mad. Like I hear that. I see that. I'm going to wait with you guys until host comes out. I put in the call. They'll be here as soon as they're done, okay? Exactly right here now. And they are able to put you into a shelter spot today. Now. Right now. Okay? What? Sam Jones? Sam right now. Probably Sam Jones. Okay. So there's a lot of negative feelings about Sam Jones, and that's realistically the one of the only options right now for these people is a, is a shelter. <laughs> Palms in is full. Catholic Charity is telling me they need they need many more buildings like Palms in. Oh, you did have a pass? She was just saying she wasn't. Hey, Ruby Cube! All right. So that's uh, that's what the uh, police department is doing right now. They're just going around telling people. So, so it sounds like after all that. that. Saying she actually had a pass. It sounds like after all that, talk about not that. I gotta get out of there. I'm hurt. I'm, I'm upset. I'm mad. And he thought he stole from me. 
And I'm still gonna get him. I'm gonna still beat him because he's fucking my mouth. He stole my baby's jewelry and I was gonna give it to her for her birthday. Like, really? Like, I don't have nothing to have to give her. That's so bad. I feel really bad because he took that from me. But okay. He's gonna be. I'm like 14 and my daughter is 20 and graduated. She, well, this is uh, Martin Espinosa with the Press Democrat, and uh, I'm out here at the Roseman encampment on the day of the eviction. This uh, told by the police department that eviction of this camp here, which has been here for a few years, uh, is, is to begin as early as today. And what you have is the fire department going around doing an assessment of the area. Of the area taking a look at things like propane tanks and other safety issues and the police department just letting everybody know that that uh, that they've got to be out of here beginning today uh, Catholic Charities is here uh, host um, letting people know that uh, they have space for them most likely in shelters uh, other more involved housing options like rapid rehousing just uh, there's just the, not enough slots right now. Their Catholic Charities was telling me yesterday they're looking for uh, they're looking for property owners looking for units where they can begin to subsidize some of these some of these people, uh, but they just haven't haven't been able to find those. So right now, the, the, the most likely option is uh, oh boy. Somebody just said, as a mom, I could see myself hanging from a tree. What's what's this mark for? Uh, it's for a mark because this is stuff that somebody just abandoned, so we want to be able to start kind of cleaning debris out. Okay. Kind of freeing up some space. It's dangerous and it's... So this is abandoned, uh, abandoned stuff. So you're just notifying people that they're not there, that, 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 that they yeah. began today. So the request of the CDC is giving notifications okay. that uh, the posting date is coming to an end. Uh -huh. But at this point, they're on top of press passing. We're out here, obviously, with hosts. And our hopefully goal is to get as many people as possible to take services today. Uh -huh. Can we have access to more today? Uh, uh, they're bringing them out here, here in just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. 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 Engaging individuals, shouting out, hey, the host is here, if you like the services, trying to get as many people to engage. They're on their way. And we did get some people. They're on their way, okay. Right. Um, but I think now that it's kind of coming to the last minute, <laughs> and the property has to be for development, we're, you know, really trying to push to get people to accept services. And are, are, are people migrating to the other side of the, off, off the, the property? I, I saw a bunch of tents over there. Um, um, by the yeah, some people have gone off it. We've engaged some of them. We actually got one person from over there into shelters. Um, it, it's hard to tell what's the sort of transitory, like that someone might have moved their stuff off there and planning on moving farther on uh -huh. or had their own plans. Or, you know, it's difficult to guess where they're going to end up long term. Right. Like I said, we've been successful with at least one person there. Oh, okay. So that was John from Wolf. Yeah, we can Sergeant? Yeah, John. John Police Department. Yes. All right. We're going to help Ms. Ella. Oh, okay. Excellent. Um, yeah, tell me The Jones over there had. Hi, Ben.
Ms. Jones, a quick question? She's, this, this woman doesn't want to go to Sam Jones, but I... I can imagine how difficult we that is. And I heard, have, and I heard what you were just saying. You've gotten mixed messages, right? We don't have anything. Now they're taking the rest of whatever we have left. And I don't Little think that's members. fair. I don't think it's fair that we have to go to the streets or whatever because we're being told this or told that and it doesn't happen. Would you at least consider listening to what we're talking What? What am I listening to? Or, or, I mean, so, I understand that Sam Jones, your place there, and that didn't work for you. Can you tell me what was it about? Sam, Sam Jones, Jones didn't work for you? is not a place for me. Okay, fair enough. Pay me, pay me, pay me people that are equipped <coughs> to deal with mental illness. There's a lot of it there. I've never seen anybody when I was there. I don't know. If, I, don't think, I didn't even know who the staff was out there. I seen drugs there in the office, you know. There was a lot of things going on there. I wasn't comfortable, so okay. I left. I'm not, you know, if you're going to put me somewhere, please put me somewhere where I can get help. Really. And just not say that because there's people out here. Yeah. Really mean what you say. So another option is Rugged Golf Commission has offered up beds at their road, which is a women and children's shelter. Um, just for single women and children, I'm happy to give them a call and see if, you know, what accommodations they can give you if that's something that you're interested in. I mean, I don't want to be on the street. If, yeah. I, if, uh, if I was, was here, went to Sam Jones and I came back here, uh -huh. that should okay. tell you a whole lot about mm -hmm. what the hell is going on. Uh -huh. I'm just one person speaking. Right. I understand. That's so my truth. I also know Sam Jones works for some people and it doesn't for others. Well, and that's okay. That's I mean, okay. But we can look at another people option. People walking around you all night, hollering, screaming, oh, well, hey, go ahead. But it's not for me. I can't do that. You know, I, I really am trying to change it, but it's, it's not going to work. Would you like me to give the Rose a call? I can't wait. Okay, have you ever been to the Rose before? No. Okay, excellent. Give me a few minutes and uh, let me get them on the phone, and then I'll connect you. I'll come back and connect you with their intake person. Okay? All right, I'll be right back with you. Mm -hmm. How many people you guys are in the middle of trying to get? I know it always comes down to the last minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay. She did have a chance. Okay, because she was just portraying it as there was no offer ever made and no. she's very angry about that. Okay. Okay. Alright. Well, they gave, uh, they gave that woman an, off, an alternative to, uh, to Sam Jones Shelter, and that was the Rose. And who runs the Rose? Is that, uh... Is that the Redwood Gospel Mission that runs the Rose? Correct. Right. And where is that located? The Rose, I can't give you that address. No, but it's it, in San, Santa Rosa? Or? Oh, yes, Santa Rosa. Can you describe it? Is it, is it also a shelter? Or it's a it? women and children it's shelter. It's a women and children yes. shelter. Okay. So all of their inquiries, I'm just going to ask that you send to Jenny Lynn. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So we do have a lot of people here that are uh, objecting to the idea of going to Sam Jones. Um, as you heard, that woman was talking about just a lot of problems there, a lot of people with uh, issues of mental illness. Um, she also said there were some drug issues there, and that it's just she doesn't just doesn't feel comfortable there or safe. So they did give her an alternative. I guess Catholic Charities is going to reach out to um, uh, Redwood Gospel Mission. I don't know if you heard that, but she said that uh, Redwood Gospel Mission had offered up uh, some some beds and their uh, shelter for women and children. They r operate a shelter for women and children called the Rose. These are another Catholic Charities. Try to make our way back around to the front. What's that? Do you have a press pass? I left that at home. Yeah. I'm with the press Democrat. Huh? I'm with the press Democrat. Okay. Yeah, so the police are going around telling people that this is it, uh, that they have to begin getting out of here today. Uh, they're letting people know that they're, that as of today, they're trespassing. Or they'll be, I mean, yeah. Let's go back around. still uh so here we have out, out here we have the the homeless advocates doing the rally all right i think i'm gonna end this why did you just sit and wait for them to come to you with their disabilities and their difficulty getting to you? Why were you here? Where's the housing you promised? You promised. You absolutely promised. They said in several meetings, we have adequate housing for everyone, they said. Where is it? All right. All right. So this is Martin Espinosa, the press democrat. Okay, you've been all very patient and, and you know, given that we started late, I want to just make a break here so that everyone can Let's go and do Kathleen what they need Finnegan to do for the day. And I'm also going to offer this, uh, I'm going to offer this.
Kathleen, are you committed to an interview here right now? Sure. Oh, thank you. So, this is Kathleen Finnegan from uh, Homeless Action. So, what, what what's going on today? Well, it's a E Day, eviction day. Uh huh. And we've got some people here supporting justice for the homeless. We have lots of media here who are interested as well. Thank you for coming. And we've got a lot of people in the camp who still don't know where they can go. Uh huh. I've never told anybody in public. How many, how many people do you think we have left here? So. I haven't taken a count this morning. Some people did go to someplace else last night. Um, well, last night I was told by uh, Catholic charities that there were about 85 people left. That's and, probably about right. Then. And so what... what what um, what are you hearing from the homeless people, from, from the people here? What are they saying? They're saying, we don't know where to go. I asked Sergeant Wolf, who was out yesterday, where can they go? And he said, I don't know. So the police don't know. The county doesn't know. The city doesn't know. I don't know. And the residents don't know. What are they supposed to do? They just want a place to live. It's but, tragic. Uh, I do want to thank the CDC. What does it stand for? Community Development Commission. County Development Commission. <laughs> well, um, all right. Well, I'm going to sign off here. I, I did my normal thing that 